G'day, it's Rob here again. You know, one of the handiest things you can have in your workshop um, has got to be the old stick welder, the old arc welder. And uh, I've had a number of these over the years. And uh, they don't have to be expensive. Um, if you hunt around, you get them second hand, you can get them dirt cheap. And learning to stick weld's not hard, it's just practice. And uh, you soon pick it up. And it's handy because you can make all sorts of stuff, fabricate stuff, and it doesn't matter if it's rough and ready as long as it works. And uh, in this case, uh, it's a quiet day today, it's Sunday, and it's pretty windy outside and it's going to get hot. So I'm just going to tinker in the shed. And I'm going to make up a, um, a little steel mould to uh, cast aluminium in. Uh, just a, yeah, not a big one, just a small one out of small scrap. And I'll show you how I'm going to go about it. And... Uh, uh, you can come for the ride. So, that's that. Um, as far as welders go, uh, I bought this one off of uh, Gumtree, which is like Craigslist. $35. It's 160 amp, peerless, four coil. Beautiful welder, welds magnificently. Um, the cables came from my other one. They're big, heavy, duty. I think they're 400 amp cables. Um, if you're going to use longer cables, you've got to up the diameter of the core so you don't get any... Uh, any amperage drop, but uh, I think these are about 15 foot long, 20 foot long, but it makes it easy, you don't have to move the welder all around the shop. Anyway, get yourself a welder and uh, I'll show you what you can do with it. To make our mould, all we're going to use is uh, a bit of old crappy U-section and a couple of bits of scrap plate and we're just going to shape, cut and shape this and weld the plates on the end, on each end. So I'll be slicing this through here, take off this cruddy bit here. And uh, the main thing with these moulds to make sure the aluminium will come out is to, uh, even though aluminium will shrink, you really want to have a little bit of angle on the sides so that it won't jam in there. You know, you want to make sure that I mean, those sides are supposed to be parallel. Um, sometimes on U, C, on U section, they say they come inwards. Sometimes they go outwards. So if you're going to make a mould, I think the best way to do it would be to ensure that there's a little bit of outward spread, so that uh, and also on the end a bit of uh, a bit of slant outwards on on your, on your cut to make sure that when the aluminium um, cools down and shrinks, that it will actually come out easily, you don't want to be sort of trying to dig it out, particularly you know, as it's recessed. So I'm going to make these sides not dead parallel, um, but uh, the theory is that uh, when I use it, um, the aluminium will just drop straight out. So that's it. That's today's project. I'll get into it. First thing we do is we cut our channel to, uh, to the right length and uh, put an angle on the ends. Easy way to put an angle on the ends, just put a bit of scrap steel there, put your uh, piece of metal on and that will cant the thing upwards so the blade will come down on an angle and that'll give you that flared out cut. Just uh, set the length, that's not bad, that'll do it. And we'll just, uh, it's nice and rough. This is where these cheap band saws are handy. Now we'll do the other end. A bit of steel. We're going to waste a shitty bit on the end here, so it won't matter.
right now we'll just deburr the, uh, the cats on the, <coughs> on the inside. And we'll also clean the bit of the rust off because we're going to be tack welding it. Right, so next thing is to uh, open it out. As you can see, it's coming in on the end. So if you were to pour aluminium in, 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 into the mould with it like that, you never get it out. So we're going to have to spread the, the metal. This end's not quite so bad, but we'll spread it and get it so it uh, just goes out a bit and that'll help it release. The easiest way to do that, I'll show you. Now we have to make sure that the channel is... Uh, the sides of the channel are coming out on an angle, outwards flaring out, so that it will uh, release the... Uh, the solidified aluminium uh, when it cools down. As you can see, these are actually coming in. This one's coming in on an angle. This U-channel, I mean, it's all second hand and it's never ever perfectly uh, square when they make this stuff. So we'll have to just flare it out a little bit. And to do that, use a bit of solid round or a bit of pipe. So we didn't like that. We're going to use that to, uh, to force the, uh, the sides out. Don't go using a shifter or anything like that. That's a, Butcher's way of doing it, you'll never get anything square that way. Now stick it in the, in the vise. Get it square and then just squeeze the squeeze the round stock or the steel pipe whatever you're using into it. Just pull it off with a with a bar. Okay, that looks pretty good to me, so that's enough. We'll just check to see what it's got. I mean, this is not necessary, but we'll do it. Now, what do we got? 45.53, 45, 44.96. Yeah, about, about the same both ends. A little bit wider this end, so I'll just squash it in a fraction. Okay, that'll do. Okay, so now we'll uh, make sure that the ends are perfectly flat. I can feel a bit of roughness on that, so I'll just put that on the linisher. We don't want any air gap between the, the sides of this thing, because when you weld it on, you don't want the aluminium going into, into gaps between the, uh, the sides or it won't come out very easily. So we want to try, try and do as clean a job as we can. All the welding will be on the outside, nothing on the inside whatsoever. Right, well I've also run the, the grinder and the linisher along the inside edges here to make sure there's any burrs that are on there are gone. Being second hand, rough, crappy old steel, this has been knocked around and it's, this has been welded previously so you're going to get distortion. So yeah, just clean it up, make sure that everything is okay and then it's a matter of then you're going to weld your ends on, which is some scrap rubbish, I had line in the thing. And when you do this you have to make sure that uh, they pull in flush that there's no um, gap for the aluminium to get into so to do that you'll have to either put it in the vise or, or clamp it up with a big G clamp or uh, crampons or something and uh, whatever you've got and uh, then we'll just weld it around the outside edge so that will make a nice little uh, bar of aluminium which should be handy, quite a good size and uh, we'll do that so it's just a matter of clean up the area we're going to uh, be welding so you get a good you know get a good strike 
this is painted on, on this particular side and it's not dead flat either, I have to just flatten it out in the vise a bit but you want it pulling up nice and square so maybe that's not the best bit of steel I could have used. I'll see what else I've got, I might have a better bit. But you know, I get the paint off and then just put it together and then just weld it up. Right, well we've got a bit of steel in the, in the vise and uh, <laughs> it just fitted in and uh, we'll just tack it on the outside, I've got it squashed up so it's good clean tight fit inside so there shouldn't be any seepage I shouldn't think. So now it's just a matter of run the stick around a bit and uh, uh, once I've got it tacked I'll just turn it over and weld it up a bit better. It doesn't have to be pretty as long as it holds it and does the job. I mean the whole thing is going to be uh, pretty burnt after a while so we'll do it. That'll do, so that's good enough. Well, there you have it, all done. Uh, half hour's work, and got a mould, look at that, and that's uh, nice and clean inside. I ground the base so that it sits uh, square and level, with, you know, so when it pours it doesn't sort of run one way or anything. The bit of excess metal on the ends is good to have because you can hang on to it with some multi grips or something like that, you know, pliers when you, uh, after you pour the metal you can take it down the tap and stick it under the hose, you know, so it gives something to hang on to when it's hot. But uh, yeah, inside it turned out good, the welding was great, no burn through anywhere. And you don't want to burn through, you want it perfectly clean inside so it lets go when, it, uh, when the alloy contracts. And that's it. Half hour's work, Sunday morning. All you need is a 30 buck welder, welding rods and uh, a bit of scrap steel. So, does it work? <laughs> well, who knows? It should work, technically it's all correct. So, in a couple of days time, I'll, uh, or maybe in tomorrow if I feel like it, I'll, uh, I'll do a pour and uh, we'll see how well this uh, homemade quick and dirty little uh, uh, casting mould turned out. There you go, I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. Cheers.